Yo, what's up guys? Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm, and I got a great video for you guys today. So today's video, we're going to talk about biological efficiency and how that relates to you on your mushroom farm or your mushroom growing operation. And should you use big bags, small bags, big tubs, small tubs, how you can get the best yield and the highest success rate. We're going to cover all that, the pros and cons. And uh, those of you just now tuning in, my name's Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years. This is my full-time job. Here's just a few pictures of some of my grows over the years, of some of my recent grows. We're standing here, actually, in my brand new mushroom farm that I built here in western Colorado. And I sell my mushrooms mainly at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. So if you're into mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. And at the end of this month, we're doing a subscriber giveaway, so be prepared for that. And I'm also going to have a huge Black Friday sale on my website. The website is linked down in the description box below, so be sure to check that out. But anyway, on to today's video. So biological efficiency. What is biological efficiency? So biological efficiency is basically what kind of yield are you getting out of how much substrate you got, okay? So how much of a yield are you going to get out of a big bag or a small bag? And I do want to say, if you want to get technical with terms, biological efficiency actually relates to the dry material that you're starting with in that bag. But that is pretty much irrelevant, actually, for your final outcome as a mushroom farmer. Really, all you're, all you're concerned about, for the most part, at least all I'm concerned about as a guy that's been doing this nine years as my job, all I really care about is what kind of yield am I getting, okay? Like, how many mushrooms am I actually getting per block, how much effort and time goes into making each block, and what is my success rate? Like how much contamination do you get? What's the best thing you can possibly do? And I want to say too, this all relates to scale of your farm, okay? So there are times in the past when I used small bags, and now I actually use a lot of XLSA bags, a lot of big bags. Most of my gourmet substrate or 10 pound blocks. Sometimes it's like 10 to 12 pounds, kind of in that zone. I've had a lot of people basically just ask me what size blocks am I using on my farm? Because I grow huge mushrooms, massive mushrooms. And that has a lot to do with what size bag you use. And so anyway, let's go ahead. Let's talk about these big bags right here, okay? And this relates to tubs too. You're gonna get the exact same effect if you guys are growing mushrooms in tubs. But as far as growing gourmet mushrooms out of these big bags, let me just explain something some of the pros why I use them. Number one, you get freaking massive mushrooms, okay? So the bigger the block you have, the bigger the mushrooms you're gonna get, okay? Hands down. That also means you're gonna get a bigger yield per block. As far as species are concerned, on my gourmet mushroom farm, I'm typically growing oyster mushrooms, lion's mane mushrooms, usually oysters and hericiums, okay? I also do like king oysters, black pearl king. I've also done um, like golden enoki way back in the past. I don't do too much of that anymore. And I've also done some chestnut mushrooms, but we use the same thing for all these different mushrooms, okay? I wanna talk about the yield on my oyster mushrooms first, okay? So the yield on my oyster mushrooms, typically like blues, aspens, mushrooms like that, they're gonna be in the zone of like two to four pounds yield per 10 pound block, okay? So you're getting about two to four pounds per every 10 pound block that you have in your grow room, all right? Now, mushrooms like pink oysters, golden oysters, okay? You're not gonna get as heavy as a yield from those. Okay, typically around two pounds average or so is what I'm getting for like my blue, or I'm sorry, my golds or my pinks. So two pounds or so on the golds or the pinks, now, that does affect, obviously, if you are selling by weight. I want to say, me, personally, I sell all those colorful mushrooms, the pinks and the golds, by volume, okay? The blues and the kings, all those things, too, I sell them all by volume, just so you guys know. It's kind of how I run my farm, and, I, and that's why I say a lot of this is contextual, okay? So if you're the person that you're selling by weight, you're selling to chefs, wholesaling, stuff like that, try to get your customers more so to buy like your blues, your kings, mushrooms like that, mushrooms that are gonna give you a high weight. And if you are going to sell your golds, pinks, mushrooms like that, you need to upcharge a little bit for the price just to make sure that you're profitable because otherwise you're probably gonna be losing some money or just not making the profit near you could if you were not upcharging or selling by volume. So that's why I choose to sell by volume. The only time I'm selling to weight, by weight is to a chef that I have a standing order with, and all of my chefs, I've pretty much established that they're gonna be getting blue oysters, king oysters, black pearl kings, 
or lion's mane in their mix boxes. Most of them that I've worked with are buying mixed boxes for me nowadays. I have had some in the past buy just boxes of blue oyster mushrooms. That's really common too. But I pretty much set them up to where they're going to get the heavier weight ones. And that way, when I go to the farmer's market, everything at the farmer's market for me is straight volume, okay? That way, it's just fast for me. I can fill up my boxes just by eye really quick and know, hey, I'm getting 25 bucks for this box or whatever, okay? So that's how I do my sales at the farmer's market, just kind of relating to the different mushrooms I do here on my farm and the different weights we get. So that's how I structure that on my farm. Now let's talk about my lion's mane yield a little bit and the heresiums, and then we'll get on to talking about some more pros about these big bags and stuff like this, okay? So anyway, as far as lion's mane goes, typically I'm getting like two to four pounds on average out of one XLSA or one 10 pound block of lion's mane, okay? Same thing with heresium coralloides, heresium americanum. You're in that two to four pound zone somewhere around there. So lion's mane and all those heresiums, you actually get some pretty heavy weight. It takes about two weeks for that block to grow out and you got a nice profitable mushroom to sell. So lion's mane is highly efficient and that's why I like to grow a lot of it here on my farm and it's very popular. It's so popular at farmers markets and even at restaurants with chefs just because the popularity lion's mane has gotten on social media and everything else. So a lot of people know about it and a lot of people want it. Now, as far as the pros we've talked about, like I said, you get big mushrooms nice quality too so that's another thing with these big blocks your quality just gets better like if you look at my mushrooms you'll see like how robust they are how vibrant they are and that's just because we have a bigger block of substrate in general okay now another pro when it comes to using these big blocks is just reduced labor overall and that is one of the main things that got me to switch, okay? Like when I saw the increased like quality in general of my mushrooms, because I am the guy, I, I do, I stri strive for high quality with all of this stuff. That way, when you present it in front of your customers, there's really no question about it. You are undeniably awesome, okay? When you provide this really, really good high quality selection of mushrooms, okay? It becomes undeniable when you walk up to my stand at the farmer's market. So making sales becomes easy. So I just recommend trying to grow the highest quality stuff you can, and you get that with these XLSA bags. So that's definitely another big pro for me, okay? And now also, like I said, reduced labor. I'm a one-man show here on the farm, okay? So I have had employees in the past, but even when you have employees, you're paying labor, okay? So the more touch time you have and or your employees have, just the more time you guys are spending working, all right? So when you have a smaller bag, you're gonna to have to seal more smaller bags. There's gonna be like more transporting them. There's gonna be more harvesting. Like when you're picking, you're gonna be picking off more bags and there's gonna be more cleanup. And also when you get rid of the bags, I had a subscriber asking too about the uh, bags, what we do with them. We'll make some videos on that. But when you get rid of the bags, you gotta strip the bag off the block. We compost all the blocks here on the farm and then you still have to dispose of the bag. So the more bags you have, just in general, the more work you're doing. So if you can use a bigger bag, you just have less bags on your farm and it makes things a lot easier, okay? So that's those are some of the main reasons why I choose to use the XLSA bags on my farm. Now, is the biological efficiency better though? Like, dude, you get more mushrooms out of the big bag or the small bag? Well, here's the thing, guys. This is what's interesting. The biological efficiency on like a five pound bag, like a half size bag of this, is actually better than what you get on an XLSA bag. So pretty much the moral of the story as far as biological efficiency, the smaller the bag or the smaller amount of substrate you have, you're going to get better biological efficiency. So you're gonna get a better yield, all right? So what kind of yield are we talking about, man? So anyway, on like a five pound bag of bulk substrate for blue oyster, you could get up to two pounds. Same thing for something like lion's mane. And I will say stuff for like golden oyster, pink oysters, ones like that, they're gonna be reduced. You're gonna get like around a pound or maybe just a tad over a pound, okay? So that's where you're at yield wise per block on the small substrate. Now, when should you use a small bag though, Mike? Cause if you're using these big ones, why would I use these small ones? And I'll explain, here's some of the benefits of using these small bags beyond the biological efficiency. Okay, so just being a smaller substrate, it's less likely to contaminate, okay? Just because the mycelium can colonize it faster, I've just seen it. Even if you're using the exact same spawn rate, typically the smaller bag will still colonize faster. And then as far as like contamination, you probably get reduced contamination. Overall though, when your skills are good and you just like learn good sterile technique 
it doesn't matter, okay, at the end of the day. And that's why I choose this. So once you are very confident in your skills in like the lab, your block production, everything like that, there's almost no reason why you shouldn't go to XLSA bags to reduce labor, okay? Now though, as far as small bags, one of the benefits though, let's just say if you only have so much sterilization space or so much steam space, the kind of cool thing is when you have a lot of small bags, you can fit more small bags in a steamer, obviously, than what you can in the big bags. You can fit twice as many. So you can grow more variety, I will say that. So when I was just kind of starting and I was scaling up my farm, okay, when I was in between about like 50 and 100 pounds a week, I feel like you can use small bags and get by. And even up to like 150 pounds a week, you can still use small bags, but that's kind of the zone that it starts to get a little hairy, okay? And then you may want to consider using some big bags, all right? It's a really weird line when you're just first starting your business or you're just growing some at home. I will say if you're growing some at home and you're just doing it for your family, it's totally up to you whether you want to use obviously like a big bag or a small bag. You can do a lot of cool stuff obviously with just the small bags, but what the problem is is you won't. If you want those like giant mushrooms, massive mushrooms, you won't get those quite as big mushrooms if you're using these smaller substrate. And I just want to say all this relates to like tubs and totes as well. Like the smaller size tub you're using, the smaller the mushrooms are gonna grow out of that. But you'll have reduced contamination just because stuff can colonize a little faster. And I also feel like too, a lot of guys are wiping out their uh, tubs using like just aseptic technique, you know, and you're not fully sterilizing the stuff. So if you're just wiping stuff out in a bigger area, you're more, more likely for your like your arms or your sleeve or something just to drop something in there by accident or you may not get it as clean. It's a lot easier to get a smaller little tub or shoe box clean. So that's just some stuff I've seen for the guys that do grow out of those things. But if you grow out of some big ones, that's how you get like freaking massive mushrooms. I've done some grows out of like 10 by 20 trays and even growing out of 10 by 20 trays, that actually would give me a really nice effect as far as the yield and the size of the mushrooms and the quality that would come off of those. So you can always kind of find like a happy medium. I also want to say too, just for like the context of using small bags compared to big bags, if you're the type of person that is making these small bags to sell grow kits or something like that, or selling some grow kits at the farmer's market, it's not a bad idea to make a couple small bags then. Sometimes that can work out for you. I will say when I was farming mushrooms back in St. Louis, Missouri, okay, and I opened that mushroom retail shop, that's kind of when I did my conversion to XLSA bags all the time for my growing. I did still make some small bags, some five pound bags for grow kits, but then even towards my last couple of years doing that farmer's market in St. Louis before I moved out here to Colorado, I actually decided to quit bringing the small grow kits to the farmer's market and I only brought big ones, okay? And just so you guys know, like if you're wondering like what was I charging for these grow kits at the farmer's market too, like a small grow kit, I would get like $25 for. For the big ones, we'd actually get $40 for. So. You can charge whatever you want kind of around that zone. I will say as far as like shipping these things, that's kind of why I stay out of it right now. If you're wondering like why I don't sell grow kits anymore and things like that. Number one, I'm out here in Western Colorado in a high desert. So if somebody's gonna buy them from me at a farmer's market, they need to have like a grow tent set up because you can't really miss them out here and get a high quality yield like what you could if you don't have a big, a nice grow room set up like me or a grow tent. So you pretty much need a grow tent out here Everywhere else though, you know, pretty much you can just do them on your countertop with a spray bottle. And I also just don't like shipping these things. The shipping cost just adds up. It makes a really pretty high price tag, I feel like for you guys. And another thing for me personally, just because of my footprint here on the farm, just kind of the way I built this building, the whole building, the grow rooms, I have two grow rooms on the farm, my incubation area, my lab, my kitchen, everything like that. It's designed to pump out like almost no more than 600 pounds. I could do about 600 pounds max here out of this farm if I really wanted to. But with just me working here without any employees, like two to 400 pounds a week is kind of like my personal zone. And any more than that is just way too much labor. We're doing things here, like I said, to reduce some labor. I'm hooking my Fenrir bagger up here shortly. And I've also been using, believe it or not guys, if you're wondering like how I sterilize all my grains, I only use pressure cookers. Like some guys have big autoclaves. I've actually never bought one, okay? And I will say, what's really cool, you can get these 150 liter autoclaves that can fit like 20 something five pound spawn bags in them. And they're like three grand now, between like three and four grand. That did not exist way back in the day when I first started getting into this. And I'm about to get one, okay? So I'm gonna get one 
um, this upcoming year. So we're going to be sterilizing all of the spawn this upcoming year in my new autoclave too. So I'm stoked about that. I'm just looking at every single way I can increase efficiency here on my farm. And I'm going to share everything like that with you guys. But that autoclave is going to be really sweet because what I can do when I can make 20 something spawn bags at a time. I'm not looking to sell any of it, but what I'm looking to do is just put some extra storage in my walk-in cooler. So then that way I always have like a stockpile built up. So if you ever do have a catastrophic failure, you got a stockpile of spawn in your walk-in cooler. And then you can pretty much just decide whatever you want to grow for the next upcoming weeks. It's just easy to keep yourself on schedule then when you got like a stockpile in your fridge. So that's kind of the route I'm personally going to take. But I'm looking at all these different ways I can increase efficiency on the farm. And uh, I just want to thank all you guys, too, for tuning in and watching today. If you guys have any questions over anything I went over here in this video, just be sure to drop it down in the comment section. I've got a lot of videos I'm making for you guys, too. So I had a guy asking about, like, bursted grains. He was having issues with some grain spawn. So we'll be doing some grain spawn videos talking about bursted grains. I'm also going to be talking about packaging mushrooms. I'm also going to talk about some do-it-yourself stuff too on the farm. I had a guy kind of commenting yesterday that's got some mushroom growing experience. Says he's a full-time grower and uh, he's been tuning in for a while. He was kind of just commenting, talking about how you need to know your market too. And uh, that is another thing too. I feel like with this whole mushroom farming thing, knowing your market is a huge thing. I just didn't cover that in uh, yesterday's video because I wanted to keep that related just to like kind of equipment and um, stuff like that it's, and substrate. Basically, I did have a subscriber asking about just different types of equipment and substrate. So that's what yesterday's video was mainly about. But we'll talk about markets and all that stuff too because it makes a huge, it's made the world of a difference for me. I'll tell you guys, over the years, I was actually adding this up. I have sold at 10 different farmer's markets. I actually like exactly 10. Out of those 10, only two of them I would call good ones, like really good ones, okay? Next year, I'm going to add in another one, and that should be another really good one. That will be my 11th one that I've kind of tried throughout my whole mushroom growing uh, career. But we're going to be doing two farmer's markets next year. We're just I'm picking the best two on the western slope in Colorado is how it's going down, okay? So we're gonna, we got an awesome year coming up. I got great stuff coming for you guys on this channel. Um, like I said, we got the subscriber giveaway coming up just at the end of the month here. Black Friday sale. Um, hopefully, you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.